At the end of the week, we got some breaking news that DC Comics are actually canceling two of the worst comics in the history of the entire universe. And here to talk to me about that is Jim from Weird Science. Ah, uh, yes. Thanks for having me, Wes. I'm so glad to be here to talk all the crazy stuff here. Yeah, they were bad books. I'll tell you that. They tried to hide it within the uh, the solicitations for the upcoming series, but two fan favorite DC series, comicbook.com's words, not mine, are about to come to an end on Friday as part of DC's June 2023 solicitations. It was revealed that the upcoming 19th issue of Batgirls and the upcoming 10th issue of Tim Drake Robin will be their respective finales. Is there something happening at DC Comics? Have they come to their senses now that they're actually going to cancel comic books that don't sell and people hate? Now, and people will probably say the the kind of the glass half full, glass half full. It took so long. It should have been canceled before. That might be true, but at least it happened. At least they ended up canceling two very, very bad books and very just books that didn't get the characters and what was going on in them. Well, let's talk about Tim Drake, Robin, number one. I think that'll be the, the bigger news, I guess, because mm-hmm. this is the Tim Drake that they decided to sexuality swap and become bisexual because Megan Fitzmartin, who no one's ever heard of, went on to the series and decided that's who the character was, even though it was in direct opposition of 30 years of character history for Tim Drake, has basically sunk interest in the character and couldn't even keep an ongoing series for for one year, canceled after 10 issues. Now, a lot of people are going to point to it and say, well, it's because Tim Drake came out as bisexual and that was an obstacle working against Tim Drake Robin. But it's the writing that's just absolutely terrible. Not only is the sexuality of the character completely off track with anything that that Tim Drake's ever done in his career, but it doesn't feel like the character. And worse than that, it's the art by Riley Rosmo that it's somehow worse than the writing or just as bad. Well, it it is. And the art, which is more confusing, the story of the art, and that's, that's the craziest combo you'll have. And like you said, you can't negate the idea that people were turned off and you know a bunch of people that tim is now bisexual but at the end of the day if you take all sexuality out of this book it's still a convoluted mess with awful art that's what this book was the story made no sense and it's not one of those things where this was eight arcs and you're like well they kind of lost track of this this was one story and it didn't make sense issue to issue and then the art on top of it riley rossimo is just maybe he has this place but it's not in this book it was all over the place and like i said if you're gonna end up having a book and you think that you have enough fans to you know to have the whole sexuality well what happened to them they left because the book sucked. Yeah, they might have been brought in and you might be able to go, but you ended up losing everybody. This book fell out of the top 200. That is pathetic. And it did it because of bad writing and art. That is 100% the deal. And I hope that that's the lesson that DC learns. You have to hire somebody who knows the characters and can tell a comic book story. You know, all the other stuff is on the, you know, outliers and whatever. But if a good story, a good story sells and a bad story will not. That's, you know, the end of the day. You know what's kind of weird right now? You know, Batman has been keeping DC comics afloat just as far as sales. But when you look at Tim Drake Robin, you know, outside the two top 200, mm-hmm. You look at I Am Batman, not starring Bruce Wayne, but Jace Fox, written by by John Ridley, is outside the top 150, I believe. Mm -hmm. GCPD Blue Wall, another Batman-related series written by John Ridley, outside the top 200, I believe, on the second issue of that one. Just being associated with the character Batman isn't as valuable as it was even 12 months ago for DC Comics. And I think it's hiring so many bad creators like a Megan Fitzmartin, like a John Ridley, that really aren't coming in here to tell any type of actual DC comic story that are coming in with their own agenda and just uh, forcing it through with these characters that don't really make any sense. And it's turning a lot of people away. And DC Comics has 
a lot of hard work ahead of them. One of the big arguments that people will have, oh, DC, they're all Batman. And yeah, that's true because Batman was selling and all the other books would sell. And you're right, that's starting to kind of disappear. And then some books that may not have the agenda or whatnot, something like a Batman Incorporated isn't selling as well because I think you're starting to water down everything with bad books. I mean, these are just pretty bad. I ended up giving I Am Batman a full you know, full out deal. And I've read every issue of Tim Drake. I've, and it just ends up where you're reading something and, and kind of get pissed because these writers don't know the characters even as well as, you know, the reader does or doesn't have the care to even present it in, in the way. And also just all these other writers just don't know how to write comic books. There's a difference between being a good writer and a good comic book writer. There's pacing and all that to it. And I don't think Megan Fitzmartin was ever shown how to do that at all because it's all over the place. And you say worst books, Tim Drake, worst book, but right there with it is her Dark Crisis, Young Justice. The red flags were up then. Uh, she just doesn't get it. I've seen what they're doing over at Marvel. We've got Tinny Howard, started out with Excalibur, which is her uh, Betsy Braddock Captain mm-hmm. Britain book that no one really likes. So they cancel that because of low sales and they launch Knights of X. And then they cancel that one after about 10, maybe 12 issues because of low sales. And now they've relaunched it as Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain, continuing the exact same storyline. We saw in a recent interview with Megan Fitzmartin, she has long-term plans from Tim Drake. It certainly wasn't just like out of the blue that they canceled the series. I imagine DC Comics plan to continue this story, whether it be in, in the Pride Anthology or a miniseries or a backup story in a series people actually want to read. I would not be surprised if the stories end up continuing in the new Brave and the Bold Anthology book, things like that. Like you said, the reason why it's a good time for these series to be canceled in June is because they're going to do that Night Terrors in July and August. So there's a good cutting off point. But I don't expect, and if people think that Tim Drake will suddenly return and he won't be bisexual, it won't be, that they're fooling themselves. That will probably remain, I think. And And, you know, that would be something DC will stick tight with whether or not they should or not. That's your own decision. But this is something where it just I I don't get why DC hires these people who don't know the characters. And it goes beyond so much than just sexuality. It's overall because then that hindered the whole book just became that. And you didn't really get a character. You got a caricature of Tim Drake and it just didn't work. The other series, obviously, that's getting canceled is Batgirls by Clunrad, Becky Clunin and Michael Conrad. I guess they're a couple who Mm -hmm. who do story writing together. I believe she used to be kind of a high-vis artist. They've worked on multiple series, including in a big event called Trial of the Amazons with Wonder Woman. And they haven't really together written a competent comic book story for DC Comics yet. But they continue to get work. They got this Batgirl series. I don't know why it went past six issues. The sales were bad and the storytelling was awful which you would expect from Clue Red. Now, they're also the writers of Wonder Woman. We know that Tom King is taking over as the writer of Wonder Woman, so they're off that book, too. Could it be that DC Comics have come to their senses and kicked Clue Red to the door? Yeah. I, I think they have. Uh, Clunrad is going to be writing the Exo Manowar book that's going to start up soon and ha- let Valiant deal with them and the fans because they're not good. They're not good at all. They ended up not just they didn't ruin Wonder Woman. They just made Wonder Woman a nothing book. Now, the trial of the Amazons was completely horrible. But all that all that ended up doing is people just ignored Wonder Woman. This Batgirls book. They ended up from the beginning, they came out in an interview and they were talking, oh, yeah, this will be great. The, the girls, they're 13 years old and people called them out on them. What are you talking about? The, oh, we didn't mean that. That was misspoken. Oh, they're, they never once in this book, like you say, mentored by Barbara Gordon. That's how it's explained. Why? They were both Batgirls. They are both competent. Cast one of the most dangerous characters in the DCU and they end up making them seem like they're just literally little schoolgirls giggling around and incompetent, not knowing what's going on. They didn't ever get anything from the past. And the continuity in that book is completely crap. It's all over. They don't know what they're doing and they just are allowed to go with it. And this has to stop. Hopefully, again, with this Tim Drake and the Batgirls done, this is DC saying we're not going to let this nonsense continue because it is nonsense and it ends up killing characters that need to, you know, get more exposure 
exposure and deserve books. DC Comics doesn't have a, a lot of really cool female heroes. Some of them are kind of feel generic. You know, obviously you do have Wonder Woman mm-hmm. out there and, and a few others that are worth talking about. Cassandra Cain has potential to be one of those big female heroes for them. She is related to Batman, but she's got a cool backstory. She's got a cool power set like that, just with her training and just how dangerous she is. But she's also cool because of her personality and that she doesn't speak. And it gives the character a uniqueness that's not really there within the DC universe. And it felt like they didn't know who she was. She was speaking in complete sentences all the whole time. I know. That, that's one of the big, like, that's the, like, the obstacle she has to get over. And, yeah, it's cool she can read people's language, you know, the body language because she, but that's because she doesn't speak. And because of that, you know, I don't mind when she, you know, speaks a couple words, she's learning, whatnot. In this, she's waxing poetic. I mean, there are word bubbles uh, that of her that have just tons of dialogue. You're like, who is this character? You don't get it. And even the interaction between her and Steph. And like I said, it's, you know, oh, look at us. We're just these young kids running around and whatnot. No, that that's not the deal. And they never could grasp that. They ended up having just goofy stories. I think, first up, they're trying to grab the Burnside Batgirl feel of that and you, you got to read the room there as well. It just ended up it was you said the writing was on the wall immediately because it certainly wasn't in the book because that book stinks. I read every issue again and every issue I just gritted my teeth like you don't get the characters. Yeah, it shouldn't feel like work to get through a comic book. It should no. be an enjoyable experience. Reading Megan Fitzmartin, reading Clue Rad has absolutely been work at DC Comics. But Megan Fitzmartin isn't writing anymore, even though she says she has plans for Tim Drake. And it sounds like Plune Rat are, are kind of moving on. So if they're clearing the decks and they're getting rid of the chap and they're just, fuck it, we're not going to put out these bad comic books anymore. We need to start cleaning up and, and fixing our house. I'm all for it. If Megan Fitzmartin's going to come back and start continuing this story in other places, if Plune Rat gets another chance on another character, like it, you're starting to tell your audience not to come back. Yeah. Is, my, is my point. It's a good start, but you have to kind of go for it. Yeah, I, I had said it all along, and you know, I know that some people got upset at Tom King being on Wonder Woman, but I have said it for months to a year now, until the Clone Reds were off of Wonder Woman, I'm not going to take any sort of new initiative seriously because you're not showing that you do want to change. Now, they ended up doing it, so that's that, and it actually was, it's weird to say a pleasant surprise that books are canceled, but these books needed to be canceled they weren't good they weren't selling that's one of the things but they just they weren't getting it and to have say a jeremy adams off of the flash but yet the clone rats going and running roughshod through these books just didn't seem fair so at least you kind of got that and we'll see how it goes on we'll see where these characters end up next the cancellations were definitely well earned on the part of Megan Fitzmartin and Clue Rad themselves. We kind of talked about how Tim Drake Robin was destined to fail from the very beginning because DC Comics and Megan Fitzmartin made so many mistakes right in the early going. I don't think they knew who this comic book was for. They certainly didn't market it to anybody that wanted to read it. If you haven't seen this video, definitely check it out right now. You need to see this one. There's also a link in the video description.